Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is Aptiv PLC, ticker APTV. We are going to work through this company, both its business quality and valuation over the next five minutes. I hope you'll stay tuned. Industry, auto components. So if we dive into the business description here, we can see that Aptiv designs, manufactures, and sells vehicle components worldwide. They provide electrical, electronic, safety technology solutions to the automotive and commercial vehicle markets. So it has two segments, signal and power solution, and advanced safety and user experience. So quickly what we can see here, these are critical components to a larger piece of equipment that tends to allow you to have some pricing power and could be pretty attractive from a business quality standpoint. Now, next thing I want to look at is return on invested capital. The first thing that comes to mind is I have less than 20 years of data here, which normally you'd have 20 years of data, so it means it's either a relatively new company or the data is relatively new for some reason, either due to a merger or something like that. But we can see in 2009 you have nothing, but if we take 2010 as the first year of data, 9%, and basically since 2010, excluding 2021, we've had double digit returns on invested capital. So that's very attractive. You like to see that in investment. The only thing I don't like to see is that since 2015 returns on invested capital have pretty much steadily drawn down and now they are below double digits, which is not as acceptable. So good numbers here. And when we go over to 10 year median returns, we can see that those good numbers continue. You have return on assets of 11%, return on invested capital 17%, return on equity of 40%. All of these numbers are not only acceptable, but very good. And so I'm attracted to the business quality based on these numbers. However, when I switch over to valuation, I see that the valuation is a PE of 49. That's extremely high. So unless something is funky with this number, um, it's a little too high of a price for me to pay. And that's compounded by the fact when I look at the 10 year Kager. So the revenue history, revenue has actually declined over the last 10 years, which is very bad. If that's not an exception for 2021, which if we look down here is very clearly it isn't. 2021 was actually better than 2022 and 2019. And 20, so 2021 was one of the best years of the last decade, um, and revenue has been declining over the decade. So that's a very bad sign. In addition, you can see that assets are growing at 7%, while your free cash flow and earnings per share are dropping. That is explaining what this return on invested capital drop is doing, and it suggests that that's likely to occur in the future. So very bad sign for the future of the business here, very bad sign for the current valuation here, and so I'm not feeling good about the business at this time. Don't forget to like this video at the bottom, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can get notifications for future videos. Now let's dive on into the income statement to see if we can learn some more information. Now, first thing I'd like to see on the income statement is look down here at the shares diluted outstanding, and we can see that the shares outstanding have declined across the decade. That's good news because it means that we've had some share buybacks. However, I can also see that the shares basic kind of reached a bottom in 2019 and have risen steadily since. So at least over the last few years, they've not been doing any buybacks, at least not net of stock-based compensation. And you can see if you compare gross profit at the beginning of the decade to the gross profit at the end of the decade, 26 versus 24, you can see that that is clearly performing terribly. So 2.6 billion, 2.4 billion, you're not growing at all on your gross profit line, you're shrinking on your operating profit line, you're shrinking on your net income line, and all of those are really bad for an investor that wants to hold this company. So not liking what I see here. Balance sheet, we can see that the PP&E is growing despite having lower earnings over time. You've grown your debt over time. Um, everything here looks very bad in terms of what you can expect in investors. So I'm going to wrap this video up and say that Aptiv is not only not a high quality company because they've might have been highly quality in the past, but they aren't anymore. Um, and they're not attractive on a valuation basis. I wouldn't pay a PE of 50 for a growing business. I absolutely won't pay a PE of 50 for a shrinking business. So for me, Aptive POC, ticker APTV, is a pass on both quality and valuation. Remember, like this video, hit that subscribe button for more great videos as we work through every company in the S&P 500. Thank you.